Hello and welcome back. So today we will be going to see the treatment aspect of the torticollis condition. So as we know the treatment aspect is divided into the conservative management and the surgical management. The conservative management comprises of the medical management and physiotherapy management and the surgical management. Coming to medical management, the first and the foremost thing which you need to remember is treat the underlying cause. Now what do I mean by treat the underlying cause is that as we have seen in the previous presentation, the acquired torticollis or secondary torticollis, in such conditions the torticollis is present due to already an underlying disease. For example, if a patient X has tonsillitis and it has worsened and become a retropharyngeal abscess due to which the person is having torticollis. So you need to treat the cause that is tonsillitis. So when you treat the tonsillitis, the torticollis will automatically be treated. So treating the underlying cause is very, very important. Moving on. Medications include NSAIDs, benzodiazepines, other muscle relaxants, anticholinergics and local intramuscular injections of botulinum toxin. Botulinum toxin treatment is the most effective available therapy for spasmodic torticollis. So as we have seen in torticollis there are a lot of tremors and then there's pain and everything. So tremors pain, everything can be treated with the medication such as NSAIDs, mother, muscle relaxants, everything. But botulinum toxin, as you can see in this picture, it reduces the presynaptic acetylcholine. That means it reduces the receptors coming from the presynaptic terminal and that's how it reduces the tremors and it gives a relaxation to the muscle. So this is how the mass sternocleidomastoid muscle is seen and palpated and then the botulinum toxin is injected. For surgery, there are two main reasons. Number one being when the conservative management fails, that is when the, your medical and physiotherapy management fails, people go for surgical management. Number two, the main and the most important is to avoid facial symmetry and to avoid plagiocephaly as we have seen in our previous presentation about these two. So to avoid facial symmetry and plagiocephaly, people go for surgical treatment. In surgical treatment also you have unipolar release, you have bipolar release and you have endoscopic release. What do I mean by unipolar release is that the origin of the muscle is released. The sternal head or the clavicular head is released in unipolar release and in bipolar release both the origin and the insertion of the muscle is released. As in this case they have done a bipolar release where you can see the sutures in the origin as well as insertion near the mastoid process. So this after releasing the muscle lengthens, the muscle gets relaxed and the patient is definitely normal. Physiotherapy management. The aim, what should be the aim? One is to correct the deformity and number two to maintain the correction. So how is that done? PTRX, that is nothing but physiotherapy treatment. If a person or if a child comes to your clinic, the first thing you need to do is evaluate. Evaluation plays a major role. Careful evaluation of range of motion and the degree of deformity is a must. Followed by your teeth treatment aspects so some of which can be followed thermotherapy HMPs have played a major role in relaxation of the muscle as we saw in the previous presentation there's continuous tremors and triggers so you need to relax the muscle so for that HMP plays a major role massage deep friction massage and petrissage massage these two massage techniques have given good results so you need to practice these two massage techniques on such conditions passive movements followed by stretching so how do you give passive movements and how do you give stretching coming to passive movements in supine position with the head beyond the edge of the table and neck in extension that means the patient's head should be out of the couch and the shoulder should be inside the couch he should be placed in such a way then you need to give relaxed passive movements to the cervical region. 
in pain free range remember in pain free range you need to give relaxed passive movements followed by stretching so how do you give the stretching when the right sternocleidomastoid is involved like if the right sternocleidomastoid has torticollis the head should be gradually bent in side flexion to the left held there for a while and then rotated gradually back to the right so the stretch should be given in the opposite direction so passive movements followed by stretching then pnf neck extension can also be given to see good results positioning and active correction so what do i mean by positioning as we saw in our aim the second aim is that to maintain the correction so to in order to maintain the correction we need to give correct positioning so how do we decide the positioning the exact positioning of the head during the sleep is very very important the child should be made to sleep on the opposite side of the lesion and the position of the head is adjusted by the pillows so if you have right side affected then you need to sleep on your left side please make sure that you don't sleep on the affected side so that is about positioning active correction active correction is best achieved by assisting the child's head to follow an object moved in the proper arc of correction for example if a child is sitting in front of you when you take a pen or light or torch and you try to attract the child's attention to the torch or the pen or any object you have probably something which is very attractive like torch or some colors torches which usually comes so the child tries to follow your torch direction like however you move your torch the child tries to follow that so you need to make sure you move it in an arc direction over the child so that the child can follow it so this is the recent advance which is usually practiced that is active correction here the child himself takes an initiative to move his head so this is something which you need to see that is collar collar is usually given to maintain the correction and post surgery also to maintain the correction the collar is given so the, this collar can be removed only while performing exercises and it has to be put back and this is one of the technique how a therapist is giving a stretch to the baby coming to physiotherapy management following surgery so previously we saw the conservative management that is without surgery now we come to physiotherapy management following surgery number 1 is to control pain active movements and working good posture controlling pain again our hmp plays wonders to control pain so it can be given on regular basis to control the pain now active movements emphasis should be on active movements especially for the sternocleidomastoid which becomes weak following surgery so initially what you can do is give free movements free active movements encouraging the patient then you can give specific exercises for the sternocleidomastoid muscle so these are some of the free active movements which you can give followed by specific exercises related to sternocleidomastoid working on posture guidance on proper posture should be educated to the person to avoid the reoccurrence of such a condition how he has to sit what is the posture which has to be maintained during the daily activities so we all need to educate the patient about working on his posture and definitely the collar which i have shown in the previous slide the collar should be removed only while performing exercises and should be left like that daily